In video 15, we're going to begin the process of confirming the user's email. So when a user registers a new account, we'll immediately send them out an email. And when they click on a link within the email, they'll be able to confirm their email. And if they don't confirm their email, they won't be able to log in. That's the way we'll configure that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go into the startup class. We'll configure our identity options to where if the user does not confirm their email, they won't be able to log in. That's the first thing we'll do. If you're just joining us, this is video 15. And we set up a lot of our, like our database, things like that, identity. We did that in prior videos. If you missed any of those, you could check that out by going to the playlist up here in the top right corner. Let's look at the database we already set up. So here are all the users we created in the prior videos. And here we have a column for confirming emails. And as you can see, all the users haven't confirmed their emails. And that's what we're going to set up. Confirming emails could be pretty confusing. And I set up this diagram to kind of give us a visual of all the steps we need to complete to confirm an email. A lot of the steps we already completed in prior videos, like for example, from our Angular application, we're calling our API, our register API. We already did that in a prior video. We sent in the user's information. Assuming that the username is unique and the email is unique, then we add the user's information to the database. We already set that up. And then we give the user back a response. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add on sending out an email immediately after we create the account. So in this video, we'll be mainly working within this section right here. So we'll be setting up our email service where we can send out an email. And then we'll be checking our email account to see if we have a link in our email. So let's start inside of the startup class and we'll configure that first. In the API folder, open up the startup class. And throughout the video, we're going to need to make a few changes to this file. But for now, we'll only add one more option right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to require the user to confirm their email before they can sign in. So I'm using the sign in required confirm email. And I'm setting that to true. By default, that is set to false. Before we go any farther, let's make sure we save it and restart the application. And we'll double check to make sure that we can't log in without confirming our email. So I'll restart the application and we'll test it in Postman. Before we had no problem logging in with this account, Mike8, but now this account has a unconfirmed email. So if we try to log in now, we shouldn't be able to. Let's try logging in. And now we're getting a 400 bad request, exactly what we we're looking for. Also back in the terminal, you should find this where you cannot sign in without a confirmed email. Now we're ready to move on to step two, and now we're ready to add in some settings for sending out an email. We'll start inside of our app setting files. Let's do that next. Let's open up our app setting files, and that is this one and this one as well. And then we'll start inside the development one, and I'll add in a snippet right below the token. And this is all of our SMTP settings that we're gonna need for our email service. Now there's many different email services you can use. Like if you use Gmail, they even have an email service where you can send out emails. But in this case, I'm gonna use what's called MailJet. And I like to use MailJet because they have a free service where if we go back here, where you can send a certain amount of emails out for free. And it's really good for development. If you would like to follow along and use this email service, you could find MailJet at MailJet.com and I'll have this link down in the description. After you get done creating an account, to find your settings, you go to set up my SMTP right here when you get to the dashboard. Click on that. And then here is your username and password. You want to make sure you add that within here, your username and password. And then your host and port number. You want to make sure you add it from, if I go back here, here. So this is your host. So I'll go ahead and copy this. And then the port number, I use 587. So let's set that up as well. Inside the host, paste. And then the port number is going to be 587 if you're using MailJet. And then you want to set up your username and password. I'm going to be adding all this information within my app setting file. The reason I'm doing that is because that file I'm ignoring and I never push it up to GitHub. So I don't have to worry about my username and password getting up on GitHub. But you just want to make sure you set this up within your development file or your app setting file. Now I have the name 
SMTP within my app setting file. And I don't want this to conflict with that. So I'm going to change the name to dev. I'll add that on towards the end. Just keep in mind, if you change the name for whatever reason, you want to make sure that matches up with what we're doing within our email service. Step three, now we're ready to set up our email service. If we go back to the diagram, now we're at this point and we're gonna set up our email service where we can send out emails. I already set up the class and the interface just to save us some time. Our email service is located inside of the core project. Open up the services, email, and go ahead and open up both files, the interface and the email sender file. And we'll look at the interface first. So all this is is just one method and we pass in all the information we're gonna to need to send out a email. And then we use this interface within the email sender and we implement it and now we have this method and it's empty and now we need to set up the part where we actually send out the email. The first thing we wanna do is bring in the configurations that we just set up. So to do that, I'm gonna set it up within the constructor. I'll add that at the top. So we're setting up our constructor and it's called email sender and we're bringing in our configurations so i need to bring that in from the microsoft extensions configuration and now whenever we want access to our configurations we'll just call on this now we're ready to work inside of our send email async so the first thing we'll do is we'll set up a new instance of our mail message and we'll make sure we bring that in and click on this and we'll bring that in from system net mail and we're passing in the address, the, the from address, to address, the subject, and the message. Everything we need to create a email. Next, we wanna set up the part where we actually send out the email. So we'll use the using, and we'll set up a new instance of the SMTP client, and we're passing in the host, information that we just set up within our config, and the port. Now, I made a mistake before setting this up, and I spelled this wrong, I think it was, and I had all kinds of problems. So make sure that you spell these strings correctly and make sure they match up with whatever's going on with it within your config file. If you get any errors at this point, the feedback is not really that good. So it's going to be really hard to troubleshoot. Next, we'll set up our credentials. And I'll bring that in from system net. And then this is the part where we actually send out the email. We're getting an error here because this is an await. So we want to set up this as a async method and that should take care of the error. So here we're actually sending out the email. Now we just set up our email service, but now we need to tell our application about this email sender service. So we'll do that within the startup class. So we'll go back inside of this file. Right up here at the top, we're gonna to add in our new email sender, and I'll add that here. Now our application knows about this, this new service. So whenever we want to use this service, we can bring it into our controller, for example, and use our email sender. We finished up step three and we finished up step four. We created our email service and we set it up within our startup class so our application knows about it. Now we're ready to work inside the register API. If we go back here again, so this is the register API. So when the user successfully creates an account, right at this point, we're gonna actually send out the email. So we'll call the service we just set up, we'll send out the email and that's what we'll work on within the register API. The register API is located inside of the identity D controller. So we'll open this up and we'll be doing all of our work inside of the register API right here. So we only wanna send out an email if the user successfully creates an account. So we'll do all of our work within this if statement. So if the result succeeded, we'll get the new user from the DB. We're gonna need the user ID. So that's good that we have this here. And then right below this is where we'll do our work. The first thing we want to do is set up a token and this token is going to get sent back to us and this is how we're going to confirm that it's the user confirming their email. So the first thing we'll do is set up a token. So I call it token and we're using the user manager and the method called generate email confirmation token async to create a token. Now if you're going to use this, this is very important that we tell our application about this. So if we go into the startup class, and towards the end of the add identity, we're gonna add on to it and we're gonna use add default token providers. If you don't do this, then you're gonna have problems validating those tokens. So make sure you add that within the startup class. 
And if we go back into the identity controller, now we're ready to set up our URL. This URL we're going to be sending to the user's email. So we're going to assemble a new URL and we're going to pass in the address of whoever's confirming the email. So we need to set this up within our configurations in a second. And then what we're going to do is we're going to attach onto our URL the token, the user ID, and then we'll have this assembled URL that we can email to the user. Let's set up our configurations. If I go inside of the constructor and I'll add on towards the end here, our configurations, and we'll pull in our I configuration. And now we'll have access to our configurations and then we'll set up our config file. I'll jump in here and I'll add on towards the end here our return paths. So the confirm email address is going to be localhost 4200 confirm email. We'll be setting up this in the next video. Also, let's set up the sender's email. And this is a valid email and this is the email account that I used with Mailjet. And that's all we need to do in here. Let's jump back into our controller. And now we set up our configuration and I'll remove this last comma right here. And then we'll need to bring in the HTTP utility to finish this up. And you want to bring that in from system web. So now we have a assembled URL and we could send that to the user. So let's set up the part where we finally send out the email. And the first thing we'll do is we'll set up the sender email and we already set that up within the configuration we just did that and that in this case it's oop developers at gmail.com that's my email but of course you want to use the email that you're using with Meljet. so when you are creating an account with Meljet, whatever email you used with that account you want to make sure that email matches with whatever you put inside the config file and then here's where we actually send out the email we'll pull in the email sender service in a second but we'll put in the sender email who are we sending it to? In this case, the user from the DB email, the message and the assembled URL string that we just set up right here. Let's bring in this service, this email sender service. So up here inside the constructor again, I'll add on towards the end here. And now we have access to our email sender. So that should take care of the error. If we go back down here and the error is gone. And now we're finally ready for testing. So you want to make sure you add all of this within your register API. If you don't feel like typing all this out, you'll find a snippets down in the description. If you click on that, that link down in the description, you can just copy and paste this right into your register API. So let's test this. We'll make sure we restart the application and we'll test this in Postman. So here in my email account is where I'm going to get a new email when we register a new account. If we go back to Postman, so I'm going to register a new account. I'm going to use the email oopdevelopers at gmail.com. My username is going to be Mike1234. So let's go ahead and hit send. So we got a status 200 OK, and we were successful at creating an account. If we go back to our email account, and we got a new email, I'll open this up. Now, the reason I'm getting this message is because the sender and the receiver email is the same thing. But the important part here is here is our link that the user can click on to confirm their email. As you see here, we're passing in the token and also we're passing in the user ID and that's how we'll confirm their email. Now that we're able to send out an email and we're getting a link within our email account, let's actually click on that link and confirm the user's email. And we'll do that in the next video. So in the next video, we'll send the token and the user ID that we're sending from that link that we're passing in the params of that link. We'll send that back to an API and actually confirm the user's email. We'll set all that up in the next video.